Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. You know the saying, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, let me say that gamblers don't want to be dealing with a lot of smoke, right? You want results. You want to know the risk-reward. If you're going to take a chance on a fighter, then you want to know exactly what chance you're taking. There's too much smoke right now around Kelly Pavlik for gamblers to take a chance on his next fight. Uh, Pavlik is talented. Um, we don't know if all the rumors that are surrounding Pavlik are true or if any of the rumors surrounding Pavlik are true. But my point to you is given all the smoke in the room, you cannot bet on Kelly Pavlik in his next fight. He just withdrew from a fight against Brian Vera and the warning signs are all over the building. Right? First, by way of background, let me just point out, I don't know whether any of these rumors are true or not, but uh, last year, uh, esteemed journalist Pedro Fernandez, and understand, Fernandez is the host of the longest running boxing show, Ring Talk, that's online. Fernandez has had champions, uh, journalists on his show. He's known in the industry. He is a credible source. And last year, Pedro Fernandez reported that Kelly Pavlik was in rehab for alcohol abuse. Right? There are also other rumors out there that Kelly Pavlik had some altercations possibly with law enforcement and um, again I don't know if that rumor is true. Pavlik's camp denied the alcohol rehab story right but what we do know without any doubt is that Kelly Pavlik backed out of a fight against Paul Williams last year that would have been a uh, financial bonanza for both fighters. Uh, we do know that Kelly Pavlik fought Sergio Martinez and that uh, Pavlik lost that match um, this year, right? That's Pavlik's last fight. And now we know that Pavlik, who was set to be on boxing's biggest stage, right? Cowboy Stadium for the Manny Pacquiao uh, Antonio Margarito fight before possibly 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 fans uh, in an event on a card that is likely to get more than 1 million pay-per-view buys even in this slow economy. In other words, this was a great showcase for his talents against a fighter, Brian Vera, that he's faster than, that he's bigger than, that he hits harder than, and keep in mind, Vera uh, only has something like 11 knockouts in his dossier. So this was really a great showcase for him uh, on this year's marquee card, and uh, Kelly Pavlik recently announced that he was withdrawing from that fight because of a rib injury. Now, I would encourage everyone to read carefully the comments of everyone involved with the withdrawal. Understand, I'm not going to name names here, but understand when someone says lines like, um, Kelly has never done anything wrong around me. Or, um, you know, has Kelly had problems? Um, I don't know about that, not to my knowledge. Uh, these are the kind of plausible deniability lines that lawyers like myself tell clients to use when they're asked difficult questions um, that might uh, put them in a position where they have to give uncomfortable answers. Um, it looks to me like the people around Kelly Pavlik are given less than unequivocal responses to the questions. Um, you know, you're hearing uh, things like, well, you know, whatever the reason, Kelly cannot go forward with the Brian Vera fight. Now, I don't know what's going on with Kelly Pavlik, 
I uh, do know that there were some troublesome signs just from a boxing standpoint about this fight. Um, I didn't like the fact that the Brian Vera fight was scheduled to take place at 164 pounds, a catch weight between middleweight, which is 160, and super middle, which is 168. Right? Given that Kelly Pavlik is the box office draw between himself and Brian Vera, one would assume that Kelly Pavlik was the person who asked for the catch weight. And I'm guessing the reason he did so is because he's having a problem making 160. In fact, by his own admission, Pavlik had to lose a lot of weight to make 160 against Sergio Martinez. And I'm sure Kelly's uh, most ardent supporters will concede that Kelly Pavlik lost the last few rounds of that fight. Uh, in fact, some believe that had Kelly not lost the last few rounds of that fight, which often happens when a fighter is not as well conditioned as his opponent, right? Stamina plays a role in boxing. Had Kelly not la lost the last few rounds of that Sergio Martinez fight, maybe he would have won the fight or gotten a draw. As it was, Kelly faded in that fight and now in this fight he was set to fight at 164 a little bit too small for super middle too big for middle in other words when you see a catch weight like this on a guy who traditionally has been a 160 pounder and when you're aware of the fact that when he ventured outside of the middleweight division he lost to Bernard Hopkins I believe that fight had a 170 catch weight uh, then that tells you that this is a guy having weight problems who, quite frankly, might not be big enough, right? I'm not talking about height. I'm talking about size and confidence. He might not be big enough for the Carl Frotches or Arthur Abrahams or Lucien Boutes or Andre Wards of the world at 168. And if he's forced to lose to get to 160, he might not be healthy, robust enough for the guys at 160 in what right now is a very loaded division with Williams, Martinez, Pirog, even Hassan and Jikum, right? So Kelly Pavlik already was in that 164-ish world, and now he's withdrawing from a fight that, quite frankly, I was predicting he would win, uh, a fight that would have gotten him the kind of publicity uh, on the Pacquiao undercard that most fighters can only dream of. So let me just end in saying sometimes it's not about the fight before you. It's not about the car in the driveway. It's about what's under the hood or the smoke around the car. Right now there's just too much smoke around Kelly Pavlik for uh, me at least to take Pavlik in his next fight. Uh, Pavlik could fight a fighter making his professional debut and I would be hesitant to be involved in that fight. Let me say this, if uh, Pavlik's next fight is against world-class competition, the winner of Williams versus Martinez, or you know, one of the guys in the Super Six, and keep in mind, some of those guys are going to be available soon, because of course Durrell and Kessler have already dropped out of that tournament, uh, the loser of the Glenn Johnson, uh, Alan Green fight is going to be out of that tournament. That tournament's going to be narrowing. Uh, if Kelly Pavlik is fighting world-class competition, don't be fooled into assuming that Kelly Pavlik is 100% himself and that he's on top of his game. Um, he lost his last fight, folks. Right now, he just withdrew from a fight. I think that that assumption is just too risky to make at this point. I'm going to have to see Kelly Pavlik look like Kelly Pavlik in his next match before I wade back into those waters. My advice to gamblers is to at least pause for a moment before you put any money on Kelly Pavlik's next fight. Um, that's what I think. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Uh, visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and visit us on Facebook at gamblersadvisory.com. Let's start a conversation about this. Uh, just know that sometimes it's not the opponent that a guy is fighting. Sometimes it's the smoke around the guy 
that gamblers need to look at. And here, I'm coughing. This room is smoke filled. Thanks for watching.